What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. We are once again back talking about the draft lottery rebuilds as we are here with the Chicago Bulls. Not only will we, will we be talking about their lottery pick, we'll be talking about their offseason in general as it's a very important one. Because as we know, I think most of us NBA fans, including Bulls fans, wants to see this team rebuild. They've kind of hinted at the idea that they might finally do it this offseason. Off will they actually? They may have made a promise with their lottery pick, which is something they've done in the past. There's a lot to get into. Let's just go ahead and jump in. We'll be drafting Devin Carter at pick number 11 for the Chicago Bulls. Let's jump into the Chicago Bulls draft lottery rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. So let's go ahead and just start up top with the Chicago Bulls offseason. So a lot of important decisions have been made here. DeMar DeRozan, free agent. Do you sign him to a max extension? Do you keep him around? He's 34 years old. He is your best player, but do you decide to just let him go? Could you possibly sign and trade him? A lot of different things to decide with him. Zach Levine, just coming off an injury last year. It sounds like to try to trade him. And then uh, it's like the big rumor of him going to Detroit. And then he's like, you know what? Screw that. I'm out for the season. So maybe that's what ended up happening. But Levine potentially be traded this offseason. Obviously something to monitor. Uh, Kobe White blossomed last year. Vucevic uh, and Caruso are two guys. I would monitor to see what happens with them. Patrick Williams apparently has interest in the OKC Thunder. And obviously the biggest story I think is, you know, Alonzo Ball coming back from his injury. Does that push the, push the Chicago Bulls to try to stay competitive some more? Or, you know, does that, I don't know. So it, it's going to be interesting what the Bulls do this offseason. I know they've kind of hinted at the idea they're finally, you know, willing to make some changes. So we'll see what those changes end up being. And as far as the Devin Carter thing is, so apparently Devin Carter has received a promise. And a lot of people believe it is the Chicago Bulls. And it does make sense because the Bulls have been a team that have promised in the past. They promised Chandler Hutchinson years ago. I remember that. Uh, so do they promise Devin Carter at pick 11? I'm not sure. But that's who we'll be taking in this draft for the Bulls. So let's just go ahead and jump in and start with that. Although it wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe make a trade here immediately. So the one guy I know for a fact we're trading this offseason. And then I'm not sure what we're doing after this. Is we are trading Zach Levine. Regardless if you're keeping Levine or, not, or if you're going to stay competitive or not i think levine is still the odd man out i think this team uh just probably needs to move on from him i don't think his trade value will be that fantastic which is why i think like a team like the 76ers or the lakers might be interested in levine services and probably could get them for a decent uh, little return so that's probably what we'll look at as far as with the chicago bulls like i said would be prioritizing i'm still not sure what they're going to do this offseason as far as you know going towards a rebuild or still try to stay competitive. I'm definitely interested to see what they do. But I guess I'll just do my best efforts here. So before we draft Evan Carter, I'm going to see if I can trade away Zach Levine. Today's video is brought to you by DGF's Optimizer. If you play on assets as Price Picks, Underdog, or any other DFS app, having a tool like this is so clutch to finding good plays right in front of you with having to do any research whatsoever. For example, on the board right now, it looks like the books are heavily favoring Luka to go under 9.5 assists back at home for game three. So will this happen? Not sure, but basically what this does, it compares discrepancies across sports books and it does show you obviously the juice as well. As you can see, every sports book is just absolutely ripped Luca to go under nine and a half. Does that mean it's going to happen? Definitely not. Nothing is guaranteed with this, but over the long term, fighting uh, EV plays like this guarantees success over the long term, which is why having a tool like this is so is so clutch. So they also have Josh Green, you know, favored to go over half a three-pointer made. So those are two plays I would absolutely plug and play uh, if I was making a slip right now. So, and of course, like I said, they got all kinds of options here. Not just uh, basketball. They got WNBA. They have uh, eSports. They have baseball. All kinds of options to choose from. And of course, I use it on apps such as Price Picks. Price Picks is a DFS app that allows you to choose between two to six players, two players being three times your entry, all the way up to six players being 25 times your entry. How it works, like I said, you choose Kyrie Irving over 23 and a half points if you want. You can mix and match that with literally anything on the board. So you can go to NHL, you can go to esports, you can go to MMA, you can go to boxing, all kinds of options to choose from. You even got some NFL season props on the board, so if you want to check that out. So make sure to check out Prize Picks. Link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHBULLS. The match first positive dollar for dollar up to $100. And then on DGF's Optimizer, use code CRUSHBULLS. They give you 25% off your first month when you use code CRUSHBULLS. And here was the success I had yesterday using the DGF Optimizer. Absolutely amazing. I uh, had a big takedown over on Better. And then uh, one on Flip. One on Dabble. And then we actually have an open one for price picks. 
Thankfully, I didn't take Luca's assist, which is favor, heavily favored to go under. We got his rebounds as the last leg here. So hopefully that ends up working out. So make sure to check out those tools down in the description below. Other than that, let's get back to the video. So I'm going to simply start off with trading Zach Levine in the trade fire, or at least trying to trade him in the trade finder. So Damian Lillard is offered to me. Obviously, the Bulls are not, or the Bucks are not trading Damian Lillard for Zach Levine. Bones Highland and Terrence, man, I don't hate it. I'm not going to lie. I don't hate this trade, although I don't think uh, the Clippers can even do anything like that, especially considering Paul George's free agency is pending. So, yeah, it says they have cap space, but in real life, that would like they would have to renounce Paul George's cap hold. doesn't make any sense. Um, Grizzlies, Hawks, maybe. I don't know. I feel like there has to be, like I said, the 76ers, the Lakers make sense for a guy like Levine. Charlotte, maybe as well, if they were trying to make something happen. The Lakers want to give us Jalen Huchifino and Gabe Vincent. Uh, I would, I might try to move him to the Lakers, but it definitely has to be even for more than that or a little bit better of a return than that. So let's go ahead and start with, let's start with the 76ers who could definitely absorb him into his calf space. So let's go start with the 76ers here because that's kind of where I want to move them. And then I'll talk to the Lakers if not. So we're going to go to the 76ers and we're going to try to get B-Ball Paul at least in return. So let's see if we can get B-Ball Paul. Uh, let's say we can get like 16 in this draft, which is considered a weaker draft class, as we know. And then maybe one more future. Uh, the Clippers pick would probably be too viable. Uh, that's another Clippers pick. Uh, I guess that's the three picks they have to trade. So uh, maybe this would, this probably wouldn't be enough to get, you know, rid of uh, Zach Levine. But I guess we could maybe do this one. So uh, that's a swap worst. Although, like I said, is that the Clippers pick? I think it might be. I know that Clippers, obviously 2028 protected is something I'd hang on to if I'm Philadelphia, uh, but I'm not, I, I hate reading these swaps. I always feel like I read them wrong. Uh, obviously can't trade for that, but uh, maybe the 76ers don't really have a package for us. Let's go to the Lakers instead, who, you know, may be interested in bringing in a guy like Levine. So um, who would it take to, maybe they give us like Jared Vanderbilt, which I wouldn't mind. So Zach Levine for Vanderbilt. And then uh, Jonah Chafino, and then maybe their 17th pick. I think I'd feel decent if I'm Chicago about getting that return, if they're willing to offer it. Uh, and maybe we get like Maxwell Lewis as well. So I'm going to go ahead and send this over. They want Alex Caruso. Damn, that'd be a tough build to swallow. I can't throw Caruso in here. Maybe we get rid of Gabe or not get, get rid of Max Lewis and just get Vanderbilt and Chafino and a 17th pick. They want Caruso still. They really, really want Caruso, which makes sense. But I do not want to throw Caruso in here. Um, Caruso is maybe I give you Javon Carter instead. What about Javon Carter? So and they want a first round pick. That's not happening. So I'm not doing that. Uh, and then is there anything else I can give them? Phillips. Maybe I'll throw Phillips in here. They can't do it anyway. So maybe we can't make the trade before draft night with Levine. So we'll just jump into the draft and draft Devin Carter. So number one, Alex R. Number two is going to be Kyle Filipowski. Very interesting. Caller to the Rockets. Montez Bazilis to the Spurs. And I don't even know how good uh, Devin Carter is in this draft class. I've never seen him drafted, I don't think. Or at least not in the lottery. Uh, so he, he his overall might suck uh, in this lottery. But I might increase it if that is the case. Because, uh, like I said, he's promised to get a lottery pick. Which is, uh, you know, really good for him, obviously. But let's go ahead and see if I can find him. I guess it would probably be easier to do it by uh last name order because obviously he'll pop up around the c so devin carter where are you devin Carter? there he is so shooting guard uh his rank across okay you got some people high on him so we're gonna take him i have no idea what his overall is in this draft class to be honest with you uh so let's see what it ends up being so he ends up being a uh 69 overall so yeah we're gonna definitely push that up a little bit i'm gonna give him like like at least a 75 or he won't be relevant in this video relevant in this video at all so I'm going to go ahead and mess with that. And then I'm going to go try to build my own Zach Levine trade as Lonzo Ball, of course, accepts his uh, player options. But maybe go talk to the Lakers again. Maybe we go talk to a different team. But uh, we're going to try to build that Levine trade out again. So attempting to build my own Zach Levine trade has been kind of tough to do. So I've just revisited the trade finder. And I think I actually can get behind this trade where we get Trey Mann and Grant Williams. So it gives us a win now piece and a young player for the future and Trey Mann. Uh, but we're going to try to squeeze another first out of them if possible. So let's say we only get that Miami pick out of them in 2027. So let's see if they would do this. They want Julian Phillips. So give me a second. That is a done deal. So we're going to go ahead and send Zach Levine over to Charlotte, who I could see maybe being interested in Zach Levine. And I can understand if you're a Bulls fan and you're looking at that trade and just absolutely throw up. I don't think Levine's trade value would be that high. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, though. So, you know, feel free to tell me I'm wrong. That's fine. But for some reason, if Zach Levine gets traded this offseason, I don't think it's going to be as much. 
uh, as we think it might be. So let me know what y'all think about that. But so here is your rotation right now. So it's Kobe White, Javon Carter, Lonzo Ball. We have Aoudesumu, Trey Mann, of course, Devin Carter, who I just uh, brought in as well. Uh, Caruso is our starting small forward at the moment. And Grant Williams, we just brought in. And Nikola Vucevic is our starting center. So I do believe we are going to resign to Marta Rosa into a contract. Uh, Patrick Williams, I'm not sure about just yet. Usually I bring him back. Uh, so, wow, he wants $43 million, though. That is insane. Uh, I hate giving to Rosa in this, but for some reason, I feel like Chicago might actually give it to him. And uh, after like drafting Devin Carter, and that we, in fact, we brought in Grant Williams. I think it kind of makes somewhat sense to maybe try to make this thing work one more time and then at the deadline, maybe blow it up there. Uh, so yeah, I think that's probably what we'll end up doing. So I am going to go ahead and resign DeMar DeRozan. I'm not a big DeMar DeRozan guy personally, but I'm going to give him a two-year extension. And then I'm going to give uh, Patrick Williams an extension to kind of, for him to come back as well. We're bringing those guys back out of free agency. So bring both of them back. Uh, and then we're going to have a little bit of a uh, interesting rotation going to next season. So that gives us a Kobe White, Javon Carr, Alonzo Ball point of rotation with Dusuma, Trey Man, Devin Carter, Dale and Terry's down there. Alice Crusoe's starting three at the moment. I'm going to move DeRozan to the small forward now. Uh, that way he plays that position. So small forward instead of obviously playing power forward. That way Grant Williams and also Patrick Williams can share there. And then Vucevic is our starting five right now. So we definitely need to bring in a backup center. Or maybe trade for one, and maybe that means moving Caruso. But if we're trying to stay competitive, doesn't make sense to move Caruso right now. I'm not sure. Uh, is there anybody? Dale and Terry actually could slide down to the three technically. So I'm going to slide Dale and Terry to small forward, who's six seven. So he'll go there. And then last, but like I said, certainly not least, we are going to try to get a back of five. So we have Duop Breathe, Montrose Harrell. Now these options are fantastic by any means, but I'll bring in Mo Bamba. Sure, why not? So Mo Bamba is our back of five. And that is our off season. Anything spectacular by any means? No, but this is kind of where I can maybe see the bulls going. So Crusoe does go down quite a bit, which kind of sucks because I don't know if he'd regress that much in real life, but hey, that's what 2k has happening. So Lonzo ball will be healthy and ready to go this season. So that should be interesting. And then Devin Carter, like I said, I helped him up a little bit because, um, if it wasn't for that, he wouldn't be a part of this video whatsoever. He was a 69 overall. So I met him at 75. That way he actually plays a part in this video at the very least. So I'm going to give him minutes right away, no matter what happens here. And then, uh, we'll try to make something happen with his bulls team. And then depending on how the record is, we either make a trade, the deadline, or we stand pat, bring in, you know, maybe another guy. I don't know. So we got a couple cut, cut a couple guys. So that will be the two at the very end here. So these guys can go. All right. So let's go to next season. So next season, Powering can let us 28. So they're not very high on us. I think Billy Donovan after the season has gone. And then this is your starting five at the moment, which I agree with. So it's Kobe White, DeSumo, DeRozan. Well, that all also, you know, obviously is going to change once Lonzo Ball is healthy. So once Lonzo is healthy, I'm going to put, sadly, I'm going to put Devin Carter in over Dale and Terry. So I'm going to do that for now. But once we trade Caruso at the deadline, more than likely, because I assume this team isn't going to be very good, then we could kind of talk about, like, you know, uh, Dale and Terry getting minutes. And then is there anybody that could send to the G League? I technically could send Dale and Terry to the G League. I guess we run a 10 minute rotation. That way we have Mo Bamba getting minutes as well. And we'll give Dale and Terry, uh, we'll give uh, Devin Carter minutes over Dale and Terry for now, anyway. So, uh, and that's kind of what we'll roll with. And then once Alonzo Ball is healthy, that's going to change a lot of things. But. I'll more than likely see all the deadline because I assume this team isn't going to be good. But hey, maybe I'm wrong and this team ends up being good. We'll see what happens. So we are at the trade deadline here as this team is not good whatsoever. So we're going to start this deadline off by trading Crusoe for a first round pick, especially from the Lakers. That could be a very good pick in the future. We do have to take Gabe Vincent salary back in return, but I'm not good, too concerned about that. So we go ahead and send out Alex Crusoe in order to get a first round pick. So that's where we start. But we're 13 and 38 at the deadline. The team just sucks, man. It is what it is. So yeah, 21 from DeRozan, 17 from, uh, from Kobe White, 14 from Nikola Vucevic, 12 from Devin Carter. So uh, pretty cool seeing that. Lonzo Ball literally just came back, but uh, he's averaging 12 and then uh, 12 from Trey Mann. So that was the first trade, first of many, I will say here at this deadline. I'm going to look in trading to Vucevic, trading DeRozan trading uh you know maybe guys like Devin or not Devin Carter sorry uh J or Javon Carter that way we could free up more minutes for some of the guards here I just brought in another guard as well after that trade uh although I'm not like prioritizing getting Gabe Vincent minutes by any means but yeah so we're gonna go ahead and continue to uh free up this log jam that we got because we got a lot of guards right now a lot so we're gonna fix that a little bit 
It looks like we're going to be sending Kula Vucevic over to the Dallas Mavericks for a pick from the Mavericks. That is part of the Gaffer trade. So I think they have the worst swap. Uh, so we are getting the worst of that swap in 2028. But who knows where those teams will be at that point. We get Tim Hardaway's expiring contract. I'm fine with that. I don't think the Mavericks have like another first round pick to offer technically. But we do get another second out of them. So I'll take it. So we get another second. So we'll take that. So Vucevic is gone. The Rosen trade probably not going to happen this deadline. I did not see a single offer that I liked whatsoever. Going to at least try to get a first round pick for him. And no one even offered me that. So now the last thing we need to do is simply free up some guard minutes. So like Javon Carter can go. Um, so whether, you know, whatever we get back. So Pat Connington. So it looks like the Bucks want to give me a second. And uh, Connington has a player option. Uh, John Kachar, who has a couple years on his contract. So I'm not sure if Pat Connington is, you know, going to accept that option. But uh, you know what? We sent out Torrey Craig as well here. So that is fine with me. So we get a second round pick for Javon Carter and uh, Torrey Craig. So I'll take that. So now what are we going to do here? So obviously Trey Mann, Iosumo, Kobe White, uh, Lonzo Ball. Like there's so many guards. Like we're going to about to have five guards playing. I guess that's just what we're going to have to do. Mo Bamba currently is our starting center and it's going to have to be that way. Uh, so maybe I trade Lonzo Ball at this deadline as well. Not that I think I'm going to get much for him, obviously. Uh, but in 2K, his trade value would probably be a lot higher than it would be in real life considering he's coming off an injury. But let's see if anybody's willing to just take him on, uh, you know, potentially uh, as we do need to free up some more guard minutes. But maybe we just deal with it for now and then figure out in the offseason. Because, I, don't, you know, losing Lonzo Ball for nothing would suck, though, because I'm probably not going to resign him. So the Celtics want to give me a first. The Sixers want to give me Paul Reed and Tobias Harris. I didn't want, I don't want Tobias Harris's contract, obviously. Drew Holiday, Paul George. I'm not really seeing anything that I love here. So the Miami Heat want to take a chance on him. They give us some salary filler. Uh, Robinson's contract will be expiring. If they gave me a first round pick, I would do this. Uh, but other than that, there's not much to like from this trade. So if you send me a first, although I don't know if Lonzo would be worth the first at this point. So yeah, Trey Lonzo, it's just not realistic. Let's not worry about it right now. I don't think you're getting anything for Lonzo Ball. So Lonzo Ball, which obviously benches Kobe White in this situation, which I don't want to happen. So I'm going to move Kobe White to shooting guard, I guess, because I do want him to play our start. So Lonzo Ball, Kobe White, DeRozan, Patrick Mo Bamba, Sumo, Trey Mann, Grant Williams, Dale and Terry. Once again, we have so many guards in this rotation, but I am going to give Devin Carter these minutes over Gabe Vincent because I really don't care about Gabe Vincent playing. So... We're going to free up this log jam in the offseason, I promise you, though, and get this all figured out. But uh, hopefully the rest of the season, we just suck. I can trade to Rosen. And obviously, I'm hoping to get the number one pick in this draft. So we maybe add like Cooper Flag, who's a small forward. That way, you know, he won't add to the log jam that is the guard position. Or you get Ace Bailey. What? You know, just looking for a top three pick. Let's see how the rest of the season goes. So as expected, this season went absolutely horrible. We were absolutely terrible. Here are your end of the season stats. You had 21 from DeRozan, 17 from Kobe White, 12 from Lonzo, and 11 for Trey Mann. To, to be honest, right now, we kind of have a big mess. It's a big freaking mess. I'm not going to lie to you. We're going to get this figured out all uh, this offseason. We'll have a little bit of a foundation going into this offseason as Boston goes on to get a championship, and they might have one in real life here soon. LeBron James retires this offseason. Okay. This is where it all starts. Obviously, we want to get lucky in this lottery. So we are projected pick number one. As long as I can stay in the top four, that would feel good. Obviously, hoping for number one here. So let's see if that is the case. And we are going to get four. Okay. So I said top four. I guess we got top four. We got our wish. So uh, I guess I can be somewhat happy. Obviously, I'm hoping for at least Ace Bailey. You know, if I can trade up to number one, that'd be great. And get Cooper Flag. That'd be fantastic. But... We need a head coach for this rebuild. I don't believe it's Billy Donovan. So give me Will Hardy. Will Hardy is usually my favorite guy to land. So I'm going to go Will Hardy, who is a pretty good coach over in Utah. And then we can go get uh, Brian Keith, maybe to be our assistant potentially. So that's a good coaching staff to start off this rebuild, which is a great start. So we're going to go ahead and continue to fill this out. And okay, so far so good. And then last but not least is a guard guru. Hopefully I can find one fairly quickly. So we move on straight to the draft and uh we're not going to so as much as ace bailey or sorry not ace bailey dylan harper would be great as well i don't really want dylan harper because of my guard problem but uh we'll figure it out so we have number four we have pick 11 in the second round let me see if i can trade to rosen right wait who is drafting at one though yo okc any chance you want to you know to uh if i let the okc get cooper flag the thunder get cooper flag they're going to be unstoppable. But is there anything I can really do about it technically? Because if I'm Thunder, 
I'm drafting Cooper Flag. I don't care. So yeah, I don't think there's anything I'd do about that. I know it could trade up technically, but uh, I don't think the Thunder would do that. So DeRozan, though, I am going to try to trade you before draft night. See if anybody's willing to. So the Cavs want to send me Isaac Okoro and a first for him. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm already looking at this trade and I'm already liking it. So that probably, ooh, Tishon Salon. I've had him in a couple of videos as of late though. Miami does make sense for a guy like DeRozan, although him and Butler would be kind of weird, I think, uh, as a fit. Robinson, DeRozan and the Knicks, I don't hate so much. We do need a starting center, low key. You know what, sign me up. I'm sending Mitch Robinson. Uh, I'm sending DeRozan over to the Knicks. I, I don't even have to look at the other trades. We need a starting center and DeRoz or Mitch Robinson does that for us. So we'll do that. DeRozan is gone and let's see, we're gonna get a number four. So number one is gonna be Cooper Flag, as expected, number two. That's who I wanted goes three number uh okay so Dylan Harper is on the board do I allow the talent of Dylan Harper to go away just because of the guard problem we have I don't think I can do that I think I have to take him here so I am going to take Dylan Harper here best player available I know our guard log jam does not get fixed at all but he was the best player available and I think you got to take him so Joel Howard, we got in the second round, which is a pretty solid value. And then Pat Connaughton, Dale Terry, and then qualifying offers Trey Mann as a free agent. All right. So for free agency, we do have money. And uh, Lonzo Ball's free agent, who we're not bringing back. Trey Mann, we got back in Levine trade. So I think I will bring him back. So what does that give us? So that gives us Dylan Harper at the point guard spot. Game Vincent at the two, or sorry, not the two, as the back point guard. But I'm probably going to get rid of him as soon as possible. Uh, that gives us Kobe White and Iodesumu. So I do want Kobe White to continue to start, obviously. So he'll start the shooting guard spot. Iodesumu will be the backup point guard. So move Iodesumu to backup point guard. And maybe we just don't bring back Trey Mann. It feels like a waste because obviously we um, traded him for Zach Levine or got him back in the Zach Levine trade. But I do want to develop Devin Carter here, which is why I might not bring him back. Dalen Terry, Jalil Howard, uh, Patrick Williams, Grant Williams, and Mitch Robinson, Mo Bamba. So I think what I'll do is I'll move Patrick Williams to small forward and know he'll go up in that situation. So he does. All right, so that's great. And then Gabe Vincent, I already don't really want to play next year, of course. And then Mo Bamba's are back at five right now. So what do we got as free agents? So we could maybe sign a free agent if we wanted to as well as Grant Williams is a starting power forward currently. But I kind of like the addition of Dylan Harper. Gives us some direction, at least, as a guy we can potentially build around for the future. They like Jalen Johnson, Jonathan Isaac, Santi Aldama, Aaron Wiggins, Jabari Walker. Um, Jalen Johnson, Kamenga, or Nas Reed would be great. But I don't think I want to spend money right now. I think I want to tank another season. I believe our pick is protected again. So I think that's what I'll go with. I don't want to lose Trey Man for nothing, so I am going to resign him. Although that's going to create a log jam, as, as I mentioned already. But I'm going to do that. Not bringing back Lonzo, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, Lonzo Ball is going to have to leave uh, for nothing. And then back at power forward, maybe a situation we can bring in. So maybe bring in like Jonathan Isaac to a nice little contract. So Isaac will be our backup power forward. So that will be our off season. Let's go to player progression and see what that's going to look like. And hopefully we got guys developing. So we have uh, Kobe White up, Mitch Robinson's up, Williams is up, Sumo is up, Isaac is up, Devin Carter's up to 77. So it's good to see him develop. And then Trey Mandel and Terry all developing as well. So all that... It's uh, is fantastic to see. So now we can go into next season. Obviously, the expectations are going to be low again. But at least we have a guy we're building around now in Dylan Harper. And then maybe Kobe White alongside him as well. But we know how good Dylan Harper can be as he develops fairly well in 2K. So I'm pretty happy with this. This video is probably going to be a long one. Uh, as this season probably won't be very good either. But like I said, at least we've established a direction. And I'm feeling good about where we're going. So... Powering is going to land us 30th. Uh, under Will Hardy, we are 30th, uh, or we are three-star balance with Dylan Harper, Kobe White, uh, Patrick Williams, Isaac, Mitch Robinson. So I like that starting five. With Asumu, Trey Mann, Grant Williams, Dalen Terry, and then Devin Carter. So I'm going to run a 10-minute rotation the way Devin Carter gets minutes. And that'll be what we roll with. So I will see you guys at the end of the season. I'm going to send Jalil Howard to the G League as well, and uh, he'll get some uh, development there. On that, let's see how this year goes. I don't think I'm going to stop the deadline to trade anybody. I think we have our rotation set. And I don't think there's anybody I'm like, you know, desperate to get rid of. So maybe this team surprises us, make the play. And as we're off to a decent start, uh, we'll see what happens. So once again, another horrific season. But Dylan Harper at least gets rookie of the year out of this. And we got a player we're building around, which is Dylan Harper, which feels good at least. But let's go ahead and see who goes on and win the championship as you're going to have the Thunder and the Pacers in the finals. And the Thunder, of course, go on to win it all. So 
this is where i really want to start to potentially turn up a little bit hopefully we can you know establish ourselves back in the playoff picture slash plan picture but as a young team so we are projected pick number four obviously it says it's going to the spurs but uh this pick is actually top eight protected in real life so hopefully we can get it here so top 10 protected last year top eight protected this year i would love nothing more than to jump up to one and we are going to fall to six that's fantastic so i do have to go get my pick back from uh the spurs which sucks but our pick does we do get portland's pick because it was live protected so we have 23 now in this draft as well so we get to add a couple rookies to this team which is definitely something we need obviously in our rebuild so we're gonna go get our pick back and then we'll draft on draft that was six and 23. So jumping in and drafting at pick six and 23. So these are the guys that go so far off the board. Uh, Koa Pete would have been my selection here, but we have Bryson Tilly, Drake Powell, Darren Patterson, uh, Jack, you got Sid Gee. So I do think I'll take Bryson here with this selection. Uh, let's see what uh, they got. So got all-star bench. So I'll take Bryson with this selection at pick number six. And at pick 23, we have uh, Quaidens. We have Killian Anthony, JJ Starling, Noah I think I'm going to go ahead and take Mr. Quaintance here out of Ohio State. So, Quainton, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But, Tilly ends up being a 78, which is fantastic. So, we got a 78 and a 72, not too shabby. Uh, Devin Carter, Jalil Howard, except both of those. Qualifying offers, Dale and Terry's a free agent. So, uh, as I mentioned, I am going to try to kick it up a notch here. So, Robinson's wants 25 million. Dale and Terry wants 13. Gabe Vincent, obviously, we're letting him go along with Pat Connington. So, that's all good. I was just curious to how much money we actually had to our name. So, uh, we got a decent amount of money, but nothing too crazy. So nothing to write home about. But I would assume Odell and Harper, Kobe White, Trey Mann, and Devin Carter is our rotation currently. I do think I'm going to try to uh, trade Trey Mann this offseason. So I think that's where we'll go with this. So Williams and Bryce Tilly. And in particular, I'm going to be looking for a power forward or center upgrade. Well, not really an upgrade. I guess we just need a center in general. So Obviously, I could just re-sign Mitch Robinson, but uh, I think I'd maybe like someone even younger on the timeline of this roster. Uh, but that's not really here in free agency. And as far as power forwards, that's not really here either. So uh, what other power forwards are an option? So do we have money to throw at like... So we don't have money. So maybe we just try to dump some salary to maybe throw like an offer at a guy like, you know, Jabbar Smith, who maybe the Rockets wouldn't match uh, potentially just because he hasn't lived up to his potential and do the Rockets really want to pay him? I'm not sure. So... We might look into that. Kaminga's unrestricted, so maybe we can get him on this team. It's a lot of interesting options here. So is there anybody that I can just trade? I don't think there's anybody I can just salary dump, unfortunately. So I think the best course of action here is to, uh, you know, form Grant Williams, John and Isaac, a mix of those guys, and then maybe like Trey Mann to try to go get a power forward or center on the open market. Now, I have no idea why Scotty Barnes goes to the Wizards, but I want him. The Wizards sucked last year. Uh, they're rebuilding currently. So I'm going to try to get Scotty Barnes here in a trade. I think Scotty Barnes would be perfect. He's on the perfect timeline. Still only 24 years old. Would be a win now player bringing to Chicago. Chicago's a team that wants to be as good as possible. And I think getting him would be doing it right still, even regardless. So also, by the way, I forgot to mention, I did extend Kobe White and Iwood Sumu uh, at the extension deadline, rightfully so. So let's go ahead and throw Trey Mann in here uh, to start things off here because I do want to throw him in here no matter what. Uh, we're going to throw in Grant Williams here as well. We'll also throw in, uh, we can throw one of Bryson Tilly, maybe Quaidance in here. So let's say we take Quaidance here, take this Miami pick, and then this Knicks pick that we got. So all of this for Scotty Barnes. Let's see what they say. They agree. So I didn't think that would go through as easy as it did, but it did. So we go ahead and get Scotty Barnes. We got our second star here in Chicago, which feels fantastic. So we do not have our center, though. Of course, that could just be Mitch Robinson, which is probably the best thing to do here. But uh, looking at our situation now, so we did send out some money. So it looks like we're at 194 million. We just brought in a max contract with Scotty Barnes, of course. Kobe White's not making much. Dylan Harper will eventually get that, but of course not going to. I'm assuming it's because of Mitch Robinson's ginormous cap hold, but we are not a second apron team. I don't think any, I think so anyway. So let's take a look and see uh, what, ha uh, so yeah. Gabe Vincent, we're obviously not bringing back. Pat, we're not bringing back. So that's part of it. Bo Bomb, we're not bringing back. So, uh, Dale and Terry, Mitch Robinson, on the other hand. So, Dale and Terry, I'm actually okay with letting Dale and Terry go. Um, as much as it would be great to bring him back, I think it might make sense to just let him go just because we just drafted Bryson Tilly. Still have Patrick Williams. I don't really want to pay Dale and Terry as well. So, I think the best thing we could possibly do, though, is probably resign Mitch Robinson. Probably the best center we can get. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Although, I don't love giving, giving him this contract. 
I'll give it to him anyway. So we'll sign Mitch Robinson into a deal and we'll get a back of five as well. So give me, you know, Nick Richards, Jalen Williams, uh, Zach Collins, Paul Reed. Give me B-ball Paul. So that will be our center situation. Assuming we can get both of them. And no, we cannot. So that just lied to me. So instead, back up center we can get. We have Christian Coloco, Tillman, Omer. Not a lot of good options here, to be honest with you. I guess I'll take Jackson Hayes on a one-year deal. So we'll go Jackson Hayes. That'll be our back of five, at least for this year. Eventually try to figure that out. But that is our offseason. So let's go look at player progression now that we've done that. So we're bringing in Scotty Barnes to pair him up with Dylan Harper. Well, Dylan Harper's not getting paid much. Uh, Harper's up to an 83. Carter's up to an 81. So him developing is great to see. And then Howard's up to a 77. So uh, not only do we have, you know, Bryson Tilly we just drafted. Obviously, we got also Howard developing in the background who will eventually take a... Uh, to minutes his way uh minutes here in general so going to next season obviously i'm hoping to take a jump here if we can get into the plan or playoffs that is the goal and i think with bringing in scotty barnes we could definitely do so and i assume we're not a second apron team after all that i know just paid mr robinson quite a bit of money so maybe we are uh but let's take a look so uh loading a 2027 draft class because we probably have a little bit of time left in this video well, Power Ranking is is 14, so they're a little bit higher on us than they were, which is great to see that at least. So uh, we'll run with that, and here's rotation. So it's Harper, Kobe White, Patrick Williams, Barnes, Robinson, Devin Carter, Ayudasumu, Isaac, and then Bryson Tilly and Jalil Howard. I'm going to just run a nine-man rotation. Let's play our nine best players. And then, as I mentioned, I wanted to see what our salary cap breakdown is. So yeah, $165 million. So not a secondary team, secondary team by any means, which is great. So let's go ahead, summit the season. And, you know, let's see if we can make the playoffs this year. So at the end of the season, Luka wins MVP still in Dallas. Boozer's rookie of the year on the Lakers. Carter wins sixth man of the year. Wow, that's great to see. Now, I won't lie. I have boosted him up quite a bit to make him relevant in this video. So it's just really awesome to see him developing. So love to see that. Women, young defensive player. And most approved goes to Devin Carter. So him getting 17 points per game. I haven't messed with his shot tendency, though. I'll tell you that. So that's great to see him just kind of naturally developing that shot tendency, which is great. And, uh, you know, it's paying off for him. So... We end up as the second seed in the East. So I think Devin Carter's development has helped with that, of course. But uh, 21 from Scotty Barnes, 19 from Harper, 17 from Carter, 17 from Kobe White, 10 from Williams, and then 10 from Isaac. I would assume it with nine, and then Bryson with nine. So yeah, obviously, ideally, I wanted to be a better team this year. And uh, we were that, and then some. We were the second seed in the East. So after being the second seed, you know, I would love to take like a Suns approach here. If the Suns, you know, went from being as bad as possible for years to just making it to the NBA Finals. Let's see if we could do that. I'm not sure we can. Well, let's somebody come around against Brooklyn, and let's get a series under our belt, and we are going to beat the Nets in six. Okay, so now we get the six-seeded 76ers, so uh, who got Lonzo. I like that. Ooh, and Kamenga. Okay. Philadelphia, you're cooked. Or you've cooked. Not you're cooked. You've cooked. I'm not going to lie. This is a really good team. They've done a good job. All right, so they've brought in Lonzo, Maxi, Dirk Jones, Kamenga. I love that starting five round and beat. I'm not going to lie. I mess with it. I messed with it quite a bit, but hopefully I can beat them. I don't know if I can. And we're going to beat. Not only did we beat them, we swept them. Are we about to make the finals already, bro? Like, I did not expect for this much of a jump after, you know. Okay, so the Pacers, they have Capella, Siaka Mathern, Nemhard, Halliburton. So it's going to be tough, but uh, Rozier's on their bench as well. Jairus Walker's developed in there. We'll, we'll give it our best. Chicago, Indiana, game one goes to us for some reason. 2K loves this squad. I don't know what it is, but we were up 2-0 to zero at one point. Do we make it to the finals already? Bro, get in there. Oh, game seven. Okay. Game seven in Indiana. Man, we had a chance to... Devin Carter is going to start over Kobe White for this uh, game seven, I guess. All right. All or nothing. Prayers up. Let's get this game seven. Let's make it to the NBA finals, man. That would be crazy if we made it to the finals after one season. After this, bro. After everything. Bro, I think we did it. I was trying to find the words to talk. Devin Carter, 23. I, I must have done a little bit of a too, too good of a job because he's averaging 23, or at least at the conference finals, averaging 23. And uh, moving him to starting five, he dropped 31 points. So the man is on a mission. He's averaging 20 in the playoffs. Okay. If we beat the Thunder here, I would be shocked. They got Cooper Flack and Nicole. Dude, there's, it's possible we don't even get a championship today because of how good this Thunder team is. But sometimes they do say... Having too much talent in 2K can really mess you up. So maybe that leads in our favor. Here goes nothing. Game one. One is your... <laughs> Dude, if we get a championship right now, that would be insane. Game two. They even it up. Okay. Game three. And maybe we're coming back to Earth a little bit. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So we're going to get beaten five. Okay. 
Rightfully so. But the fact we made it to the NBA Finals is crazy. I did not expect that much of a jump. And we almost, we kind of had a little bit of an interesting thing going on there. Because it looked like we were about to uh, win a championship as one game one. But uh, unfortunately, it fell down after that. But the fact of the matter is, that was a great season for us. Better than we could have even imagined. And obviously, our pick is heading to San Antonio this time around. But I think we've done a great job. So player options, we're going to set both of these, of course, especially Devin Carter. Uh, Jalo Howard is a free agent. Probably want to bring him back if possible. But all right. So we obviously don't have money. Uh, let's see. So we don't, I don't think we have any important free. Ooh, can we bring in Hardenstein? So we're going to have the Knicks center rotation. Sign me up for that. Let's bring in Hardenstein. If that's our only addition, we do lose Jonathan Isaac, which could be huge. Um, so we're bringing in Hardenstein. Isaac, I don't think it's giving us the ability to resign him. It does, actually. So I'm going to bring in Isaac back as well, uh, just in case. You know, he was a big part of the success. And then Howard, if he comes back to qualifying offer, that's great. So we get the Knicks rotation, Mitch Robinson and Hardenstein. And then we're going to have development from Carter, I assume, uh, Harper, whoever else wants to jump up in overall as well. So Harper's up to an 88. Love that. Carter's up to an 82. Uh, Desumu, uh, Tilly is up. Isaac is down. And Jill Howard is up. So... Not much changes here, but I don't think we need to make any changes. We almost only won a championship, for crying out loud. I know the Thunder beat us in five, but the fact that we even made it to the finals the way we did was pretty shocking, to say the least. So, I'm going to go into next season hoping continuity takes care of the job. We'll see if that ends up being the case. Obviously, getting a much better Dylan Harper here as well should help. Uh, but center rotation, obviously having a backup center rotation should help as well, because usually 2K likes when you have a bunch of rebounding, so we got that going. So let's go ahead, some like this season. Let's hope for some success again. Maybe get back to the finals, or was it a fluke? We'll see what 2K thinks. So another successful season. No awards to really look at here for us. I doubt we have anybody on an All-NBA team. Actually, Scotty Barnes makes an All-NBA third team, so that's good to see. Uh, but here goes nothing once again. So we are the third seed this time around as we get the Toronto Raptors, Scotty Barnes, former squad. So here is your player stats. Yeah, 23 from Scotty Barnes, 23 from Harper, 17 from Kobe White, and 16 from Devin Carter. So do I go eight minute rotation in these playoffs? I think I do. I'm going to go eight minute rotation in these playoffs. That kicks out Bryson Taylor, unfortunately, but uh, it is what it is. So we get Toronto in round one. Obviously, I'm looking to go try to win a championship here as the Raptors brought in a uh, hometown kid in Shaden Sharp, and they also bring in Ace Bailey. So, yeah, pretty solid team in Toronto. Hopefully, we can beat them, though. So many current round, and we are going to be in an even series with them. We win game six, and we're going to a game seven. Early on, game seven in round one. This one's at home, though, so hopefully we can win it. So we're going to fix the minutes as best as we can. Game seven in Chicago. Do not lose to Toronto in round one, please. Let's see if we can run away with this one. We got a close one. And I think we we did beat them. Okay, so we get out of round one. A little bit of a sweat there. But now we get the seven-seeded Cavaliers. We have Garland, Mitchell, Winslow, Mobley, Allen, Tari Eason, Darius Arch, and Ben Simmons, and then John. So or Josh. So Cleveland, of course, usually kind of a Justice Winslow is so weird to see him back in the league. I didn't even realize he was in 2K anymore. <laughs> oh man. Uh, very interesting. Can we beat the Cavs? Somebody Kurt round. And we beat them in five. Okay. They take care of business there. So we get a game seven sweat in round one, but just beat the Cavs with ease. And now we get the Pistons to have a good team in Detroit. So uh, I'm definitely worried about this, but uh, I'm going to game by game here. So game one, they win. Game two, we even it up. Game three, two to one. Game four, we even it up. Okay, now we Simcast. So Simcast the rest here. Uh, they want to start Hardenstein, which uh, I'm fine with. So game five in Detroit, obviously. Still in this one in game five would be pivotal for winning this series. So let's see if we can do just that. You know, it's looking good. We might be able to do it if we don't blow it. And we do win game five. Okay. Game six, this time at home. They actually want to start Devin Carter. Or no, Devin Carter just moving up to that six-man spot. So all right. Game six in Chicago. Let's win this and not even have to sweat a game seven. We have the lead right now. Does not mean anything just yet. And we are going to win game six, I think. I think we're going to... Wait a minute. We're going to the finals again. So two years in a row, making it back to the finals. Obviously, we probably know who we're about to play. It is the Thunder. No brainer there. So if I lose here, I might just end it, though, because, guys, look at this team. Do we really have a chance to ever win this? I, I highly doubt it. So I'm going to give it a chance here, though. Game one, kind of what happened last year. We won game one. They even it up now, and this is probably where it goes south, right? 
Wait a minute. We even it up. Okay, game five in OKC. If we can win game five, that'd be huge. Can we win game five? Win game five, and we're we're in there. We win game five. Okay. All we gotta do is win game six, and we are champions. Can we do it though? Is the question. We gotta win at home, man. If we go back to OKC, I don't feel good about it. So we take the lead here, run away with it. We allow them to force OT. No way. We had it there, man. All right, game seven. This one is going to be pivotal. Huge game seven in OKC to win the championship. I think we're ending it here no matter what, though. Let's see what happens. Let's get a close game to end this one. Let's watch the end. That'd be awesome if we could watch the end of this one. Okay, so we actually have the lead, a comfortable lead at the moment. So maybe there's no need to jump in because... Oh, wait a minute. Motor spoke, might have spoke too soon. It's a 13 point with a minute 10. A 13 point lead with a minute 10 left. But we did it, man. That is what matters. So we beat the OKC Thunder in seven to end the video on a championship. Dylan Harper is your finals MVP. So after yesterday's video not getting a championship, we are back in the winning column. I will absolutely take it. Let me know what you guys enjoyed. Uh, or let me know. Or let me do that again. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what y'all thought about it. And uh, do you think the Bulls promised Devin Carter at pick? 11 or do you guys think it's somebody else or maybe or you know apparently Devin Carter got a promise do you think it's another team that promised him let me know I'm in it there I'll see you on the next one this is Crushables I'm saying peace thank you guys so much for watching make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love